joining me now is the chair of the Australian Republican Movement, Craig Foster. Craig, I, uh, I'm going to take a pretty good guess that you are upset that the government has put this on the sidelines. But seriously, though, uh, what chance of success do you think a republic would have right now in light of the voice referendum? Yeah, thanks, Carl. Great to join you. Happy New Year. And uh, firstly, I'm just delighted to be talking about it so early in the year. Of course, uh, you know, as Aussies know, we've got uh, Charles coming out later in the year, around October. So, you know, we've got 10 months to talk about it. And we're really pleased that we got underway so quickly and, and that Australians are having an opportunity to consider it. Um, actually, you know, what, what uh, Anthony Albanese, the Prime Minister, said in the last few days, I think from our perspective, is in some ways very positive because... If we look at what happened in the last referendum with The Voice last year, um, you know, there was a real feeling among many Australians anyway that it was pushed too much from the political sphere and from the political class. And, and you know, there was this whole kind of narrative, Caleb, that, you know, came out of Canberra and all of those things. Rightly or wrongly, ultimately, the, this type of issue and particularly the future of a, a constitutional arrangement, arrangements of our head of state you know, have to be a grassroots movement and come out of the people. So that's ultimately going to be the arbiter as to, you know, when we build a consensus with enough Australians to say, this is the move we want to make. Uh, and we think that that conversation will really get underway this year in light of the visit of Australia's King. But how do you ever come up with a consensus? I mean, we saw this in, in 1999. There was one model put up that obviously didn't have the support of the public, even though at the time there was broad support for the idea of a mm. republic. It's much the same problem The Voice ran into. You know, there's 100 different models you could have. No-one's entirely happy with any of them. How do you ever actually make that work? Well, what we uh, want to do this year is get around Australia and talk to as many people as possible. So, again, we haven't had this conversation, uh, certainly not over the last probably, you know, 18 months or so when I've been involved as the co-chair along with Nova Paris. And we see this year as really exciting time to travel around Australia and ask Australians the answer to the questions that you're asking. Those answers don't have to come from me. Uh, you know, those answers don't even have to come from the Australian Republic movement. Whilst we feel really passionately and very strongly about the fact that we believe we should have our own head of state to bring our own national values and identity to life, ultimately it's a matter for every Australian around the country. So I can answer that question probably closer to when the King gets here in, uh, in October. We've got 10 months to ask Australians like what they feel comfortable about, what are their concerns, how can we allay them, what are the different models. You know, you talked about, I think, you know, rightly last year, kind of um, differences of views and disagreements even within the yes case, if you like. You know, that's something that we'd very much like to avoid. And so we've been having those conversations to learn the lessons, not just from 99, of course, but from last year when we saw many of those things replicated. Uh, but ultimately, we're really excited this year about, you know, uh, having this conversation about what an appropriate model uh, that the majority of Australians, not everyone, that's a democracy, as you're very well aware, but the majority of Australians agree with uh, to make us comfortable moving forward. Just very quickly, uh, you know, the, the voice referendum costs something like $400 million. So say we blow another $400 million on a republic referendum, we wake up the next day, what practical change will it have made to anyone's life in Australia? 20 seconds. Well, we think that national identity is pretty serious, uh, you know, and is a huge part of the importance of being Australia. You know, we're a unique country. We should bring that to life in every way. We think also it, it will strengthen our democracy, Caleb, and, you know, that couldn't be more important. We also think that we should have our own representative, an Aussie, you know, um, if you like, spruiking Australia around the world. You know, you saw Charles, of course, his first act as, uh, you know, after his coronation as uh, a king of the UK, British king, was to go to France to, uh, you know, spruik uh, UK trade, and so on, and, and cross-border, uh, you know, mobility and the like. So, you know, we'd like someone on the international stage who can do that for us, who can push our economy forward as well. But ultimately, it's about just all of us stepping forward and saying, you know what, we reckon other Aussies are worthy. We reckon one of us should represent all of us, one of you, I'm talking to your viewers, uh, and nothing less to us uh, should be acceptable for the future of Australia. I still think it's a hell of a lot of money to spend to make what is 
in essence, uh, a very small change that doesn't change my life or anyone else's, unless, of course, you get to become the president or whatever we want to call you, but <laughs> we'll have that discussion another time. Craig Foster, we certainly thank will. you for your time, mate.